Hello, mathematicians. Thank you for joining me today as we look at some set properties and try to find elements and defining the properties of sets. So the first example we're going to look at is when we have a set given by a defining rule. That is, we're going to have a is the set of all x and r such that x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And what we want to do is find the elements of the set. So what we need to do is determine, okay, well, what is this saying? Well, we need to have x be a real number and we need it to satisfy x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So if we want to find the elements of the set, we just need to find the elements of real numbers that satisfy this property. So to do that, we're just going to solve x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And if we do that, we get x is plus or minus 2. Now, since both plus and minus 2 are real numbers, that means that both of these elements are in this set. Furthermore, since nothing else squared is equal to 4 to give us x squared minus 4 is 0, these are the only two elements of the set. So what we can say is that the set A is precisely equal to the set negative 2, 2. So then we've taken a set that's given in rules, and then we've rewritten it by listing out the elements of that set. Now let's look at a second set that's defined by our own. Here we're going to have the set B as given by all x and z, that is all integers x, such that the absolute value of 2x is less than 5. So if we want to find the elements in this set, what we have to do is again, we have to find the solutions to this inequality this time and determine which of those are integers instead of just real numbers. So if we're going to solve the inequality, two, absolute value of 2x is less than 5, what we'll need is, well, negative 5 has to be less than 2x, which is less than 5. So if I divide by 2, negative 5 halves is less than x, is less than 5 halves, which is negative 2 and a half and 2 and a half. Now we need to be careful here because as we're listing these, we don't just want all of these real numbers between negative 5 halves and 5 halves. We only want the integers. So if we start at negative 2.5, which is negative 5 over 2, the next integer is going to be negative 2. And then negative 1 will be next, followed by 0, 1, and 2. And then we end up at 2.5. So we don't want to include negative 3 because it'll be smaller than this. We don't want to include 3 because it'll be bigger than this. But these integers are precisely the ones between negative 5 halves and 5 halves. So what we end up with is this is just a set consisting of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now, let's suppose that we're given a set in listing method, and we want to write it using rule method. So here we're given the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, comma, dot, 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 continue that pattern indefinitely. So what we want to do is find a rule that will define that pattern. As we do that, the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to rewrite these so that I can make use of what's going on here. Now, if I look at these, notice that I can get from 1 to 3, and 3 to 5, and 5 to 7, and 7 to 9, and each time I'm going to be adding to. So that pattern kind of pops out to me. I'm adding to each time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to rewrite this as 1. And then I get 1 plus 2. And now I would get 1 plus 2 plus 2 again. And then I would get 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And then I would continue that on to get eventually 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, and so on. So I've taken, okay, each time I'm going to add 2, and I've written that as a pattern. Now the next thing I'm going to do is kind of simplify this pattern because I have a lot of plus 2s, and writing plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 is going to get long. So what I'm going to notice here is that I can rewrite this as 1, and then I have 1 plus 2. But now I have 2, 2, so I can write this as 1 plus 2 times 2. And I can write this as 1 plus 2 times 3 because I have 3 2s. And the next one's going to be 1, 2 times 4. And then I'm going to continue that pattern indefinitely. So what I have is that each of my terms are going to look like 1 plus 2 times some integer. And in particular, if I even look at 1 here, I can rewrite this as 1 plus 2 times 0. And so I can get that, yes, all of my numbers, 1 plus 2 times 0, 1 plus 2 times 1 end up fitting that pattern. So what we're going to end up with is if I write this in rule notation, this is going to be all the numbers of the form 1 plus 2 times some number, let's say k. 
And so we just have to figure out what k can be. Well, we know k has to be integers because we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But it can't be all integers because we're only going off to the right. So we wouldn't want to subtract numbers. So what we would need is, well, k can be as small as 0 and it can be as large as it wants, but it needs to be an integer. So what we would say is, okay, we have all the numbers of the form 1 plus 2k such that k is an integer. And... We also need k greater than or equal to 0. Now, as a last step, I just like to check to make sure that this makes sense is, well, here's the rule. Can we find the element? So if we start with 1 plus 2 times 0, that's 1. 1 plus 2 times 1 is 3. Then I get 5, 7, 9, 11. So I am getting out the original listed set that I have if I follow these rules. So I've taken a set that was in listing notation and written it in terms of a rule. Now, as our next example, we'll have the set D here is 4 ninths, 4 thirds, 4, 12, 36, and then it goes off in both directions. So it goes bigger and smaller. And so what we need to do again is we want to find the pattern and we want to write this down using some type of rule method. So I'm going to start with looking at 4 and notice that if I go from 4 to 12, I can get there by adding 8 or multiplying by 3. To get from 12 to 36, I can either multiply by 3 or add 24. And so since the addition doesn't work out the same, but the multiplication does, I think, okay, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. And if I go backwards, then I'm dividing by 3, dividing by 3. And notice that pattern still holds up. I would get 4 divided by 3, which divided by 3 again is 4 ninths. So I am getting that if I want to move right, I should multiply by 3. And if I want to move left, I should divide by 3. So, with that in mind, I want to rewrite this set using that pattern. And so I'm going to start with 4, and then it's just going to be 4. Then, like I did last time, I'm going to take instead of adding, I'm going to multiply, so I get 4 times 3. And then to get 36, I'm going to 4 times 3 times 3. And then if I want the next one, it would be 4 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then again, I can continue on by multiplying by 3 again. Now, if I want to go the other direction, remember I have to divide by 3. So I would get 4 times 1 third. Instead of multiplying by 1 third, just to keep it with the 3's in there, I'm going to write this as 4 times 3 to the negative 1. And then over here, I'm going to multiply this as 4 times 3 to the negative 2. Because then I have a nice pattern where I'm multiplying by powers of 3. And notice here, this would be power would be 1, and then 2, and then the power would be 3. So if I rewrite this, I get this is the set 4 times 3 to the negative 2, 4 times 3 to the negative 1. I'll even write this as 4 times 3 to the 0, because 3 to the 0 is 1, so that gives us 4. 4 times 3 to the first, 4 times 3 squared, and then we'll continue that pattern indefinitely. Now, taking the time to write this out as this is that it really helps us to see the pattern. We're going to take 4, and we're going to multiply by a power of 3. What powers of 3? Well, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, but we're also going to have negative 1, negative 2. And so we're going to get negative 3, negative 4 over here, and then 3 and 4 and 5 over here. So what we'll notice is that the powers are all just integers. And at this time, we can have positive integers, negative integers, and 0. So we can have all of the integers. So what that means is that this is going to look like 4 times 3 to the, and we'll use k here, just to say that each of these looks like 4 times 3 to some power. And what power is that going to be? Is that it's precisely going to be empty in any integer. So if I want to rewrite this, I can say that this is the set of 4 times 3 to the k, such that k is an integer. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.